Hi, and welcome to the Student Affairs Job Search by The Job Hacker. I'm your host, Dave Ang, from the Student Affairs Job Search by The Job Hacker. On the Student Affairs Job Search, we dive deeply into the steps needed to move forward in our careers. Find out more at jobhacker.com. On this episode, we'll talk about negotiating salaries in student affairs. The Student Affairs Job Search can take a lot out of a professional. You have to spend a lot of time researching positions, applying openings, fielding inquiries, and conducting phone and web interviews. So when it comes time to conduct an on-campus interview, it can feel like a small triumph, especially when it leads to an offer by the employer. But this is when things start to fall apart for many student affairs professionals. At this time in the job search process, you've probably applied to dozens of jobs and been a part of a handful of first round interviews. But negotiating a salary? You haven't been here before. That's why salary negotiations can be such a pain point for the student affairs professional. Many have little to no experience doing this. Another reason why salary negotiations are so tough for student affairs professionals is the nature of the activity. I've yet to meet another colleague that wasn't collaborative and cooperative. That is why many try to minimize the awkwardness of the salary negotiation by avoiding it. They see it as a combative process. But salary negotiation doesn't have to be combative. Remember, you are the professional. It is your duty to communicate your needs and negotiate for a salary that compensates you fairly for your knowledge, background, skills, and abilities. The salary negotiation process begins when the college or university extends a verbal or conditional offer. This means that an offer was extended to you over the phone, in person, or over email. It means that you were the first choice to fill the role. The conditional part means that this offer is conditional on agreed terms. Sometimes those terms include a reference check, background check, or credit check. All of the time it requires both parties, you and the university, to settle on a compensation package. The salary negotiation offer begins with the following items, the title of the position, the base salary, and the start date. An important note, consider everything in the salary negotiation process negotiable unless informed otherwise. I wish I had known this earlier in my career. Only through many mistakes did I learn that I could have negotiated for things like a later start date, a meal plan, and yes, even a higher starting salary. Every salary negotiation I've completed always dealt with one contact person. This was almost always the hiring manager for the position. This is the person who would supervise you. On a few occasions, it was with a human resources representative. I say this because salary negotiations can become tricky. To minimize any mishaps, miscommunications, or misunderstandings, you should rely on a single person to communicate with. That person, whether it be the hiring manager, human resources coordinator, or other executive, will reach out to other people on their team to confirm requests and details. That is their job. Your job is to remain in touch with your contact person and only this person during the negotiation process. The first thing that student affairs professionals will look at is the money. During your initial offer, you will be presented with a figure. This is your conditional gross salary, what you make before any taxes, retirement, or other benefits are calculated. This should be the number that you refer to when beginning your negotiations. Here is where some good research comes into play. Using sites like Salary Report from Higher Ed Jobs and Glassdoor Salaries can help you pinpoint where exactly your compensation falls according to the position, location, and title. I spent a significant amount of time prior to any on-campus interview reviewing the institution's salary history. This helps me determine how I set my salary expectations for the position. I then use my experience with the on-campus interview to refine my number further. What am I looking for? I want to know if I'll be asked to complete duties similar to colleagues in the same roles at other universities. If so, then I should be compensated accordingly. If you are planning on relocating, then check out the Smart Asset Cost of Living Calculator to determine the comparable salary you'd have to earn in order to maintain your lifestyle and living conditions. And can I tell you a secret? Benefits are my favorite. One of the best parts of working in student affairs are the benefits. Salaries for student affairs work is not always competitive compared to peers that may work outside of higher education. But I've yet to work for an institution where the benefits haven't been significant. Here's another opportunity where you can shine during the salary negotiation process. Sometimes institutions cannot flex as much when it comes to salaries, especially if your position is part of unionized labor, but benefits are often more flexible. Here are some benefits that other student affairs professionals didn't know they could negotiate for. Start date, professional development, relocation expenses, health insurance, dental insurance, vision insurance, 
childcare and daycare, retirement plans, tuition remission, commuting plans, life insurance, legal advice, housing, meal plans, wireless cell phone plans, wellness programs, holidays, vacation time, sick days, vehicle, performance bonuses, cost of living increases, and flexible work arrangements. This is just the tip of the iceberg. I'm sure that I forgot some, but the benefits of working in higher education are substantial. It is best to get an overall view of your entire benefits package while you also negotiate your salary. You may be able to accept a lower salary if you can make up the difference in some other areas where you have significant need, i.e. a monthly child care for young families. Not all negotiations are equal. A newly hired vice president is going to have significantly more leeway compared to a new resident director. However, if you wish to take that top spot one day, then it helps to be able to develop your negotiation chops now. So how do you approach this often difficult subject? Think about it from a win-win perspective. I know that it might be difficult, but both you and the university want the same things. The university wants to fill its vacancy with a talented and motivated professional to support their student affairs team and help fulfill great outcomes for their students. As the candidate, you want to find a challenging position that fits your personal needs and professional desires that will help you grow over time. It's in both of your interests to settle on compensation that makes everyone happy. So here are some actionable tips to consider when negotiating your student affairs salaries. Conduct a negotiation over the phone if possible. Take detailed notes and then send a follow-up email. The email should confirm the details discussed during the call, next steps, and a date and time to follow up again. Remember, this is a two-way street. Research the position's salary expectations, but don't think that you can ask for 50% more than what they've published. If the salary doesn't exactly fit your expectations, then negotiate based on benefits. This is how I was able to successfully land a rent-free townhouse in addition to a higher starting salary. Consider geography when negotiating your position. High cost of living areas like urban centers and cities are going to be more expensive than rural areas. Starting salaries will most likely be higher, so be sure to use that cost of living calculator to determine if your potential new salary can maintain your cost of living. If it can't, then you have to reason to negotiate for more money as well as other benefits like commuting plans, subsidized housing, or remote work arrangements. Your long-term satisfaction with the institution and your position is greatly dependent on how you are compensated. You owe it to yourself to negotiate on your behalf to be paid a fair wage dependent on what you bring to the table. I hope you found this episode useful. If you'd like some additional tips on your search, then a great place to start is my ebook, Getting Started in Your Student Affairs Job Search. You can download it for free at jobhacker.com slash getting started. You can also get a full transcript of this episode, including links to references in the description or show notes. Thanks for joining me. Again, I'm your host, Dave Vang from the Student Affairs Job Search by The Job Hacker. On the Student Affairs Job Search, we dive deeply into the steps needed to move forward in our careers. If you like this episode, please consider commenting, sharing, and subscribing. Subscribing is absolutely free and ensures that you'll get the next episode of the Student Affairs Job Search delivered directly to you. I'd also love it if you took some time to rate the show. I live to lift others with learning. So if you found this episode useful, consider sharing it with someone who could also benefit. Also, make sure to visit The Job Hacker online at jobhacker.com. The Job Hacker is also on Twitter at jobhacker and on facebook.com slash jobhacker. Also, feel free to email me anytime. My email address is dave at jobhacker.com. Happy searching.